It's time to meet the candidates for the House of Delegates 99th, and that includes the incumbent, Delegate Wayne Clark. Good morning, and thank you for coming. Good morning. Today. Challengers Mike Allers, Jr. Mike. Good morning. And uh, Daphne Andrews. Daphne, Good morning. thank you for being here as well. Our uh, candidates will have a minute to two minutes to do an opening statement and then a closing statement as well. In between, they'll take questions from Admirable Stubblefield and uh, also from Steve Pearson, editor of the Independent Observer. Uh, this uh, broadcast live on uh, Radio TV 10 and stream to our Facebook uh, live stream audience uh, as well. And you can catch replays of our broadcast today in its entirety on our Facebook live stream, which is archived immediately on our Facebook page or in individual segments with each office later today on our WNR TV 10 YouTube channel. With our first question, it'll be Steve Pearson. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we go to opening statements first. I'm, my apologies. This is with our, only the third one yeah. into the day? And you're yeah, already, uh, I'm already there. Yeah, with our opening statements, I'll start first with the incumbent delegate, Wayne Clark. Well, thank you. Thank you, WRNR TV 10, for putting this on. I'm Wayne Clark, and I'm running for re-election as your Republican delegate for the 99th House District. With your support, I'll return to Charleston for a third term and continue the work that I've done on behalf of my constituents. I previously served on the city of Charlestown Council and own Locust Hill Golf Course in Charlestown. I'm the husband of Wendy, vice prince, the vice principal of Eastern Panhandle Preparatory Academy, our local charter school, and dad of Megan and Maddie. I've learned a lot in the last two terms I've served as your delegate. We have a tremendous delegation representing Jefferson County in the House, and I'm honored to be a part of that. I sponsored or co-sponsored more than 58 bills that have become law since I was elected in 2020. Each of these touches on a variety of issues that impact the 99th District, Jefferson County, and the state of West Virginia. From education reform, education choice, to protecting Second Amendment and the rights of the unborn, supporting small businesses and passing the largest income tax in West Virginia history. I promise to work hard on behalf of Jefferson County. When I first ran for this office, you'll notice that the theme of my most recent ad campaign is about delivering results on behalf of our community. The ad only touches on a few of these pieces of legislation. I've either been a lead sponsor or co-sponsor over the past two years. Megan's Law was a piece of legislation that is near and dear to my heart and deeply personal, providing the resources to educators, coaches, and other education staff to help identify signs of self-harm indica indicators in kids. Not only did we pass the law in West Virginia, but the legislation has become a model for other states. Protecting our county's agricultural industry has been a top priority. This year, we passed the Farm Winery Distillery Bill, which will allow us to better compete with our Virginia neighbors and their success in agritourism. This legislation, along with other past legislation, will also allow our hospitality small business to deliver their offerings to get the government out of the way of our important community street festivals and events like the ones hosted by Charlestown Now. My role in the House Education Committee has been an important one, from continuing to expand education choice for kids, securing critical monies for our traditional and public charter schools. Being a community leader isn't just about elected office or politics. It's about supporting the community throughout 365 days a year, every year. We've supported many Jefferson County community organizations at the golf course over the years, including Jefferson County Ministries, Toys for Tots, and our local First Seed program. Thank you. Mike Allers, Jr. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for organizing this. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Mike Allers, Jr. I'm a conservative commentator and educator. I like to say I wasn't born here like my wife was, but I got here as fast as I could. And I care for West Virginia very much. I care about my little slice of uh, in Jefferson County and Charlestown. And it's full of history, charm, small businesses, and good people. This is the perfect place to grow up. This is why I decided to raise my son uh, in West Virginia. He really embraces the wild and wonderful slogan uh, at home. And it's a place where you find the real America, where you find the open embrace of faith, the importance of family is championed, and the right to defend yourself is protected. As a conservative writer, I provided the conservative perspective in a column of my local newspaper. I use my column to, edge, to advocate for West Virginia's working class to stand for life in the unborn and to advocate for higher pay for police officers. As an educator, I have been a longtime advocate for education reform, which is something we desperately need in West Virginia. And the change I was advocating in my column was not something that I was seeing down in Charleston, which is why I decided to throw my hat in the ring 
for the 99th district for the Republican nomination. And I hope to have everyone's vote on May 14th. Thank you, Mike. Daphne Andrews. Thank you for having us here today. My name is Daphne Andrews, and I am passionate about safeguarding the values and future of West Virginia. And I am committed to representing the true voice of our community. I'm running for West Virginia delegate because I believe in protecting our great state from the overreach of the federal government, the misguided far left ideologies, and even from those who claim to be Republicans but may have lost their way. Our children are our future and they deserve a safe and sound education. I am committed to shielding them from the confusion and woke ideas often pushed by the far left. West Virginia's farmlands is the backbone of our state. I will be a staunch advocate against green energy projects and solar farms that threaten our agriculture, rural communities, and traditions. I firmly believe in fiscal responsibility. As your delegate, I will ensure that taxpayer dollars are spent wisely and transparently. I'm a steadfast defender of the First and Second Amendments. I will work tirelessly to protect free speech and your right to bear arms. My husband and I moved here back in 2007. We raised five children in Jefferson County schools. I'm a career mom. I started working when I was quite young. In the past 20 years, I have dedicated my time to um, the senior community working in the medical field. I have worked many, many positions as a director and leadership roles where I had to balance budgets. I had to um, hire, fire, work with Medicare, Medicaid, insurance. I was inspired to um, really take it to the next step in politics when uh, Mark Levin announced he was going to do a march on Washington against the Obamacare Act. A group of us went down there and we marched because we knew that the Affordable Care Act was going to change our medical world, and it has. In 2015, I became um, involved locally in politics. I started uh, attending West, uh, the We the People meetings in Jefferson County, where I eventually became president. Oh, my goodness. You can just wrap it up, Daphne. Oh, and then I was also the president of Conservative Chicks West Virginia. I served on the board of Gateway Republican Women. I also served on the state board of West Virginia Federation of Republican Women. Thank, Thank you. you, Daphne Andrews. Now with our first question, Steve Pearson. Okay, we'll dive right into it. And then we'll start with uh, Ms. Andrews, so we'll go in reverse order. Sure. Um, so the Jefferson County Development Authority did a study late last year that found that average wait times for child care in Jefferson County exceeded one year compared to six months in Berkeley and three months in uh, Frederick County. Uh, West Virginia University's uh, School of Business uh, you know, uh, Center did a study that uh, the lack of child care, you know, generally the economic outlook for the Eastern Panhandle is great, but the lack of child care is a significant risk to that. Mm -hmm. So do you think this is an issue that the legislature should address? And if yes, what specific programs would you propose? So I understand that there's a group down in the southern part of West Virginia that would like to have that child care put on the special session that's coming up. Um, for me, I, I would like to lower taxes and cut the budget. So to me, this sounds like more money into programs. Um, you know, I raised five children. I, you know, my husband and I, we made it work. Um, I understand that child care is expensive and it's hard on families. Um, I do not agree with, you know, putting more tax dollars to, you know, things like that. That's where I stand. Good. Clear answer. Mr. Allers. Sure. Um, so my son, two years old, in child care. And, yes, it's very expensive. I think this uh, is because a lot of younger people are moving from Maryland, from northern Virginia. They want to raise their families here because it is cheaper to live here. Uh, so that's a good thing that a lot of kids are coming here. Um, however, I think we absolutely do need uh, action in Charleston because, unfortunately, in the Biden economy, things are really, really bad right now. Um, a lot of moms, especially moms on their own, uh, cannot afford groceries. So we absolutely do need to provide action. In addition to that, our literacy rates for our children in West Virginia are dismal. And that starts to really – studies show that at two years old, you can really make a severe impact on a child and change the trajectory of their life forever if we have quality childcare. And uh, 
you know, I, I know uh, Daphne's concern. A lot of a lot of people have the concern. Well, what if we raise you know taxes more, throw more money at the problem? It's not that. Plenty of states, Tennessee, Georgia, have used their lotteries to actually provide childcare for their um, for their citizens. And the fact of the matter is, you know. There's, we want more kids in West Virginia. There's not as many as compared to other states as well. Uh, so this is a problem that West Virginia absolutely can take on and actually push back against the Biden economy and do something for our kids and for our moms. Mr. Clark. Well, thank you for the question. Um, child care is a major issue, especially uh, as economic development and tourism vice chair. It's something that we look at all the time. Uh, I am happy to say that uh, I started working with Tiffany Gale, who is the um, uh, director of the Child Care Advocacy Group for the state of West Virginia. And in 2023, I actually introduced a piece of legislation. We did not get it across the finish line, but we will continue to work on that. And that piece of legislation requires that the DHHR pays for uh, child care participants by the same way that the public does. So it's not based on attendance. The child care facility gets paid whether the child is there or not. The problem that we're having in the state of West Virginia is DHHR has set it up to where um, if a child does receive DHHR supplements, they, uh, the daycare facility only gets paid when the child shows up to child care, and that's 30 to 40 days uh, in delay. So by changing that, then our child care facilities are more uh, – they, they have – a better way of balancing their budget. That money's already in the state budget, so there's no additional tax money that we have to do. It's already there. It's just not being used. Um, secondly, the other thing that we have to start looking at is um, how do we get more child care facilities in play? One of the things that we have a big issue with in the state of West Virginia is a lot of, especially Jefferson County, a lot of our communities are HOAs, and HOAs do not allow businesses in the home. My HOA in Huntfield, Back in 2011, when I was on city council, we got the HOA to change their ordinance to allow in-home daycare facilities. We have to do that by a community base. Each community has to adopt that in their own ordinances um, and uh, covenants and restrictions and get it passed by the county. So doing those things is going to help with our child care facility. Okay. Right West Virginia has a long history, unfortunately, of the best and brightest of our young folks exiting the states. What specific programs, as a as a legislator, would could you propose to create opportunities that would encourage young people to remain in West Virginia, specifically the Eastern Panhandle? Mr. Allen, I'll start with you. Sure. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, we absolutely need to have young people here, uh, pumping up our economy, contributing. You know, to our economy, as opposed to going to Maryland and Virginia for those opportunities, which unfortunately those states have. Um, what I plan to do, um, and I'm the only person uh, doing this, I believe actually running for the House of Delegates, I think if you go to, let's say, WVU, and you want to be a teacher, you want to be a nurse, you have to have a four-year commitment to the state. We will pay for your tuition in addition for you staying for four years. Now, that way we are getting a return on our investment. We have a 20% child. Uh, we have a 20% college student retention rate, which is awful and unfortunate. Um, but I think we would get a severe return on our investment. And here's the thing: after college, you want to escape. You want to, you know, go somewhere else. You want to go to D.C. But if you stay here for four years, you might meet someone. You might want to settle down. You might want to give back to that community. People may stay here a little bit longer if you provide that opportunity for them to get started right out of college, as long as they make a commitment to our state. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Well, thank you for that question, and unfortunately, the answer of my opponent, um, if he would have been in the state of West Virginia longer than a year, he would have known, that in 2023, we actually passed the Grow Your Own program, which is a program that actually starts in high school and allows kids to go through an apprentice program, and then when they go to college to become a teacher, they do have that four-year commitment, and the school, the, their school tuition is paid for by the state. So we already have that in play. One of the other things we need, we need to do is we need to advance that in regards to our out-of-state uh, students who are coming into the state, um, especially on education. It's something that uh, um, um, Mr. Hornby and I, we tried to work on this year in the Education Committee, is allowing someone who's coming in in a, a key role, um, whether it's teaching or, 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 or health, 
that if they are a student and they go through the pro uh, and graduate in four years and they work for four years after, then we give them uh, their tuition in return. Um, so that's another program, and that's for out-of-state people to keep get people to move in here and then stay here. Okay. Uh, Ms. Andrews? No, go ahead, okay. Ms. Andrews. Um, we'll come back to Mike. So this sure. is personal for me. As I mentioned, I did raise five children here in West Virginia. They're all grown at this point. Um, and my daughter came to me when I told her I was running. She said, Mom, bring jobs to West Virginia. I don't want to have to leave because, you know, the field that she's going into is cybersecurity and the computer stuff. My other daughter's becoming a psychiatrist. My son already works in Virginia. My other son works in Virginia. The jobs aren't here, the, the viable jobs. We need to bring them here. And there's ways of doing that. I know, you know, a couple elections ago, we had on the ballot to do away with the ta inventory tax. I would like to bring that back to the ballot and get rid of that. We need to bring viable jobs to our area so our kids have a reason to stay. I too work in Virginia. Um, that's where the viable jobs are. Uh, in Jefferson County, it's mostly you know retail, the, the casino. Those aren't viable jobs. My kids want to stay, and it's sad that you know they're going to leave. Um, so that's something I would really like to work on. It's very important to my children, and I promised them that I would work on that. All right, you wanted to counter? Yeah, sure. First of all, yes, I've lived here two years. Sorry, I haven't lived here 20. Um, not that old. Sorry, I'm 31. The other thing is, first of all, uh, it's not a matter of not knowing that that program exists. First of all, my program would provide it up front, pay for the college in full immediately, not working to get that back. Second of all, if this program was so wonderful, then a lot more kids would be staying here. A lot more people would be, this wouldn't be an issue. So we wouldn't have a jobs problem if this program was so phenomenal. Just wanted to leave it at that. My program's completely different. Next question. Mr. 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 Pearson. Okay. Um, in the uh, regular session earlier this year, uh, the Senate introduced a uh, bill uh, that would sunset farmland uh, uh, easement protections. You know, they're, right now they're perpetual, and the proposal would have uh, sunset them after 30 years. It didn't get out of committee. Do you think this legislation was a good idea or a bad idea? And I think uh, Ms. Andrews, you have to start with you this time. Um, that's a great question. That's something that I would have to look more into. Um, I, I'm not as familiar with that bill. Okay. Can you repeat that question, sir? Yeah. So uh, you're familiar with the Farmland Protection uh, Act. It allows uh, for farmland protection easement to conserve, uh, you know, farmland and, and, and farming in, in localities. Mm -hmm. It's funded by the transfer tax. And um, But the easements are perpetual. Once you put it into conservation, it stays there. The Senate uh, considered a bill or in committee that would sunset those easements. So they'd come out after 30 years, so they could be sold for commercial properties, you know, solar farms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you think that legislation is a good idea or a bad idea? Well, look, if it's going to encourage uh, more solar farms in our area, which which Daphne yeah. which Daphne has addressed, look, <laughs> I think we're all in agreement here. It's pretty ugly. Um, if that's the case, then we have to be against that firmly. And it's not a matter of property rights. It's not a matter of well, you know, it's the government, big bad government, stepping in, telling me what you know they cannot build on their farm. No, it's a matter of we need to preserve our rural beauty that farmland look it's one thing if, if you want to sell it and and have something else on there whether it's houses whether it's an apple farm that's one thing but it has to be productive it cannot be a toxic form and a false form of energy so if it's going to open up the door to allow more solar uh, panels to be built on our land then it's a no if it's going to be used for you know, I, I know a lot of people aren't into farming anymore as you know the younger generations that's unfortunate but if we're able to get more houses, a ton of more people are moving in. Land for businesses, then that's something I'd be open to. Delegate Clark. Mr. Clark. Well, thank you for that question. Um, I can tell you that uh, it's not a piece of legislation that I'm very familiar with. I can tell you that uh, me personally, if we're going to open up restrictions, lessen restrictions, I, I apologize, uh, on our farmers, for give our farmers an opportunity to earn money, whether, whether they're subdividing it, uh, for other commercial uses, regardless of what the commercial use is, whether it's a farm winery, whether it's a, um, a industrial park, or whether whatever it is, 
um, then I, I would support that. Next okay. question, Bill Stubblefield. Uh, yes, during the most recent legislative session, the House took up several socially charged bills dealing with such issues as trans- transgender labeling, content of school library books, requirement of school children to view certain films uh, dealing with abortion. Question is, was this a good focus for the legislators' time? What, if any, social issues would you address if elected? And we'll start, I think, with you, Delegate Clark. Well, thank you. Um, Those issues are important. Those issues did consume a lot of our time. I believe there was a lot of legislation that we left on the table the final day of session because of many of these social issues that we debated and argued on the floor for hours among hours. Do I want a man in a child's bathroom a girl's bathroom? No. Do we, did we need to pass this? Yes. Do I want pornography in our kindergarten and first grade classes? No. Did we need to pass this? Yes. But I think we needed to address it in a different way so it didn't consume so much of our time, and we let really good legislation die on that last night. Thank you. Ms. Andrews. I agree. These are very important issues that we do need to cover. Uh, just yesterday with the, with the overturning of that uh, of the child with the transgender and the puberty blockers, I, I can't believe that a young child is taking puberty blockers to become a girl to participate in sports. Um, yeah, these are very important uh, items. I'm okay with the time that was spent on them. I think we need to take it a step further, especially with the HB 2007. There are loopholes in that bill that need to be addressed. Um, Our our children should not be able to take those puberty blockers. Coming from the medical world, there are so many um, issues with them and what they do to your body. Um, Again, I, I agree with Wayne that in this instance, these are things that we need to talk about. They're very important. In Charleston, we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. And look, I'm not down there in Charleston. I'm not a legislator. But however, you know, if I'm hopeful, uh, you know, if I'm lucky enough to be sent there, we have to have bills that are going to address both. Now, yes, it is incredibly important that our children are not subject to pornography, explicit material in their classroom, in their library. That's insane. It's also important, uh, like, like Wayne alluded, that obviously, you know, men should not be in a girl's locker room or a girl's bathroom. However, if with us being 49th in education, we also have to have bills that are going to advance us academically. And I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. I just think we need better legislation to tie those two goals together, to keep our kids safe but also advance them further up um, our education ranking because these are dire times in our school system right now, whether it is the social issues or whether it is academic. I'm going to move to closing statements now, and if you could limit yourselves to one to two minutes, and Mike, we'll begin with you, Mike Allers, Jr. Sure. So my name is Mike Allers, Jr. Do not forget to go to my website, allersforwv.com. That is F-O-R in the middle. Um, I am a husband. I'm a father. I am a conservative commentator and an educator, especially in regards to education, which we've talked to a lot, uh, which we've talked a lot about today. Um, That is the most important issue of our time. That's what's going to get our kids out of poverty. That's what's going to give our kids a chance and going to make West Virginia better. And that is the exact reason I am in this fight. I want a new chapter for West Virginia and a new legacy to leave behind for West Virginia. And I'm ready to bring that fight to Charleston. Please do not forget to also visit my Facebook page, Mike Allers Jr. for Delegate. Thank you so much, guys. This has been great. Thank you, Mike. Daphne Andrews. Thank you for having this forum for us today. I, I love West Virginia and I love Jefferson County. And I promise that I will always put West Virginia first. I will always work for the people. My office door at the Capitol will be closed to lobbyists and corporations, but it will always be open to the people. I'm humbly asking for your vote for Daphne Andrews on May 14th. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daphne Andrews. Don't get Wayne Clark. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, WNR Radio, for hosting this very important debate. On May 14th, I ask you to cast your vote for the most conservative Republican in the race for the 99th District. That person is me, Wayne Clark, because you want someone representing you in Charleston who gets things done and has a track record to prove it. In my four years as your delegate, I've 
of the 99th district have passed 58 bills that have either become become law. Uh, educate from education court education school choice protecting our children business licensure refer, reform educate edu, election integrity west virginia tourism to abca reform making our small businesses restaurants and farmers more competitive with our surrounding states i have voted for and led the charge for the largest tax reduction in the state's history i've consistently protected the life of the unborn i've always protected your first and second amendment rights I have also have the endorsements that back this record up, endorsed by West Virginia's for Life, NRA, small business organizations, West Virginia Coal, GOPAC, Oil and Gas Association, Arch Coal. I, I am proud to receive the important conservative endorsements from West Virginia's for Life and, and our NRA Congressman Alex Mooney and others. I have the track record to run on, and I don't protest to actually, I do protest that I actually get things done. Uh, on May 14th, cast your vote for Wayne Clark. Together we can make a difference. You can find out more about me at Clark4WV or on my Facebook page, Wayne Clark for Delegate. Thank you. Thanks to all three of you for being here today and participating in our forum. And best of luck to you all on Election Day. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back 